right, we got an update from the breakdancing dad versus his daughter, Maddie. If you guys haven't seen our part one, go check that out. It's basically uh, back and forth between a dad and his daughter. Daughter releases a video about the dad being some kind of deadbeat. Dad yeah. responds saying, no, I'm not. Goes viral, et cetera, et cetera. So we're here today. There's been an update. Before we even get to that, I've actually seen a lot of different communities react to this video. Yes, and what you're saying. Our takeaway was this. I don't think it was appropriate for the daughter to put her dad on blast like that. No. Because it's a lose-lose situation at that point. If he responds, it's like he's bickering with his daughter through videos on my platform, which well, is odd. You never want your, your family business outside. No. Like, all, all the outlets that you have to solve all your issues, you decide to use social media, it's weird. It's super weird, right? And then if he doesn't respond, then the internet just flames him all day long thinking he's a deadbeat. He's getting calls at his business because everyone because in his family seen the video because it went viral. Because so of his now his public perception is that of a loser dad. So uh -huh. he's in a lose-lose situation. No. So my perspective was she was hella inappropriate for that but as far as why their relationship doesn't work or whether or not he's a good dad people are going to have their opinions everyone's going to be biased by their own lived experience they're going to say he's really in her life or they're going to say uh you know she's been completely abandoned everyone's going to have a different thing i say this you don't know the ins and outs of their family no matter how much this man posts his text messages no matter how much he posts like a video of her when she was a child that he took or whatever you don't know if he was really present in the day-to-day -day. you don't know what his standard for being a good dad is versus what she expected of a father i understand what you're saying and you're right we don't know i don't think that's the question at hand the question at hand is whether or not he just left initially listen he left a mom with four children to pursue a b-boy career at 40. So he's a deadbeat for that. The rest, whether he was a good dad or not, I but, but that, that, that's the that's what we're defining good dad, whether or not he was involved with the kids or not. And she's trying to make the claim that he was barely involved in their lives, mm -hmm. right? So people think abandoned, they think like, oh, you turn into Carmen San Diego and change your postal code and your whole identity. You know, abandonment, like, I know this is really fucked up. I literally know a family. The dad abandoned the... The, the kids, he lives two blocks away. You know how weird that is? This guy. Like, 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 like the homie would literally see his his, his dad at a random street corner at some point. It's like, so there's, no. some families are like that. No, I'm not going to pass over the fact that you brought back, where in the world is Garmin San Diego? I used to play that shit on PC <laughs> all the yeah. time. No, no. So, there's a game. There's a game. I I used to, that's how I, I learned my know, geography. I know, but that show was amazing. You're just going to skip over the fact that you're going to skip over the Carmen San Diego. You gave me a nostalgia attack, no and then you're just going to skip over that shit. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? What? And you know, the wild thing about Carmen San Diego is like, what? There was her and Jessica Rabbit. They're the two women I thought was so hot when I was growing up. And the fucked up thing about Carmen San Diego is we've never seen her face, but keep on going. No, you see a bit of her face. It's just like she's the bottom. She in a trench coat all day long. With a big ass hat. And I'm just over here like, yo, yo, what's under them buttons? Yeah. I know plenty of families that look like they're super well put together, but when you look behind the back, it's like, oh, the mom has actually been having an affair for a long time and she spends more time away from home than she does at home. Yeah. There's levels to abandonment or whatever yeah. it might be. So that's why I'm not quick to take anyone's side based off of whatever it is, okay? But what I've been seeing online is like, yo, communities rally behind one person and they go all the way. I see communicate, you're like, I remember watching, like, was, I think this guy's name is Curtis Connor. He has a community. And they're just flaming the dad. What a loser. How could he respond? Why is this guy arguing with his daughter online? And I'm like, Not this time. Benny Hanna, the breakdancing dad, was apparently receiving a bunch of hate comments from people who saw that video. So he decided to make a response video to his daughter's video and post it on Twitter. But going on Twitter to say you aren't a deadbeat dad to convince your fucking Twitter crypto bros to go and dunk on your daughter, that's probably the most deadbeat thing a dad could do. Drum roll, please. The patriarchy, you dumbass. I'm like, you. 
you guys think it's acceptable and respectful for a daughter to get up on these platforms and trash her dad like this as a deadbeat? Like, no, obviously not. And then on the other hand, there's other people who like, this dad is unbelievable. He, he, he sent her text messages. Like, oh my God, chill out. Yes, money is a good thing. Yes, money helps with a lot. Money's not everything. How involved and present you're going to be in the child's life is going to be far more important than how much you're going to send to them financially. Now, of course, some people just lose their parent and don't even get finances. But her qualms about not having a father in life may be valid. All I'm trying to say is, we don't know. We don't know. So I don't know why anyone's jumping on any team like they do. This video is a follow-up to my Sunday video on my daughter's viral video, Trashing Me, Her Dad. And these videos are all over the internet now with titles like Bitcoiner and Breakdancing Dad, Ben Hart, Navigate Storm, from Daughter's viral TikTok video. And you should see my first video on this topic before watching this video, just so you know what this storm is all about. Now she's posted a second video. I know my dad posted like a 10 minute video or whatever being like, you know, my daughter's lying. We have a great relationship. I have a great relationship with all my kids. That's just objectively not true. Like guys, we're all freaking out about this in my family group chat right now. We're being like, he's so unhinged and delusional. We don't know if he actually believes his own narrative or if he's lying on purpose, but he's just like a weird guy. Yeah, he said he lived down the street from us. That's not true. Or like if he did, it was only for a few months maybe, but actually for most of my childhood, he lived in Florida with his new wife like basically like i don't want to get into this like again like my video was basically like sanitizing the situation and like poking fun at the lightest parts of that childhood trauma but obviously in real life it was a lot more like complicated and traumatic and it was really hard he left us immediately married another woman we didn't hear from him for years and then he would visit every few months and we go out to dinner but like he truly had no hand in raising us at all we don't speak with any sort of regularity he doesn't know when my birthday is like as you guys saw in the video i posted he got it wrong he gave us some money growing up i like i honestly don't know the nitty-gritty of the financial situation I, I really really don't but i do know that several times i've asked him for financial help with medical expenses like especially like in college and he wouldn't help me so that's what i was referring to in my video when i was like he wouldn't pay some of my medical bills i'll probably delete this in the morning but i'm you know two hard kombuchas in and so i feel the need to kind of defend me and my family's like pov bottom line is this guy was a completely absent father completely absent father I don't, he's like my i was just a bike ride away from those kids and it's like not once did any of us ever ever take a bike ride to his house i don't think i've ever been in his house ever so this whole thing is so bizarre like i'm so surprised that he responded to my video because i'm just like damn i could have actually made you seem like way worse than i made you seem like in my video i just made you seem like such a whimsical funny guy like but in real life, it was actually a lot darker. So I'm so surprised that he responded to it. And it's obviously kind of hurtful and weird, but again, we don't really have a relationship. So at the end of the day, it doesn't have a huge effect on me. It's just kind of a bummer for my family. And we're all kind of looking at this and looking at his response. And we're just like, this is crazy. If this is actually his narrative, it's like delusional. Now I'm not gonna go through all of Maddie's points here, most of which are just a repeat of what her mom's been telling the kids for the last 19 years. Okay, so let's roll tape to see what childhood was actually like for my kids. And let's see how my relationship was with the kids, even after the divorce. We have with us here Maddie Hart. She is a YouTube specialist. How many how many videos, Maddie, do you have on YouTube now? About you 54. Said? And what is your goal? One day I want to be a partner. What? He's, he's, he's got the videos with his daughter in his car. He was never there. What? He was never well, never there does not mean they're literally I'm never. Not. Someone could have a video with their child and still not be present. That's like saying you took a picture with your kid, you were there. Come on. You know what? I'll allow it, fam. Uh, listen, I allow it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Because you don't know. Because you're right. You keep on reminding me that I don't know. So let's go. Let's go. It's just that it's really just I'm just basing myself on the impression that I had that you never really dealt with a dude ever. And you're sitting in his car. It's like, that's not ever. But you know what? Yeah, I'll give a little leeway. You're but, right. You're but, right. Okay, so, so here's an example. You might have a parent. They might check in on your birthday and come see you for your birthday. They take a picture or video and they do that for every year. I mean, is that really a present parent? Like, not really. I'll allow it. To me, that's not that's not going to be a determining factor. So I don't think there's a way you can really prove it to me, to be honest with you. That doesn't mean he's guilty or not. I'm just saying we're never going to know the inside of that relationship. We're not. What does that mean? I need to get paid to make videos. Yeah. So, Maddie? I'd like some more uh, YouTube insights and clarification. What is the difference between a subscriber and a viewer and a friend? So you have about 300 subscribers, but how many viewers of your videos would you say you've had so far? I have several thousand views on my videos, several thousand views on my channel, and um, just like 500 friends. Okay, why is he exposing his daughter as a cloud chaser? <laughs> I'm, I'm girl is seven cloud chaser, bro. That's crazy. Pictures 
that you're an absent. I can understand that. Okay, mm -hmm. but um, I don't. Is 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 looks less and less like an absent dad to me. But it looks like a separate dad, dad that is separated, absent. <laughs> That's a lot of photos and videos. <laughs> That's a lot of photos and videos. I'm not gonna lie to you. That's, That's a, a lot of graduations, a lot of events, and he's showing up. But maybe he's not a. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just saying. That's a lot. God damn. But hey, let's keep watching. Let me be clear. Maddie is not lying in her videos. She is saying in these videos what she perceives to be true from her perspective. She's expressing her truth. And her perception is impacted radically by 19 years of brainwashing by my ex-wife. I don't want anyone attacking or bullying Maddie for her videos. Her videos express her perspective. And I believe they are honest from her perspective. So feel free to direct negative comments my way. But please don't bully Maddie. Now I told Maddie I liked 98% of her video. But that there were some significant inaccuracies in there. Like about me not paying medical bills. That's just not true. And the implication was that I was some kind of deadbeat dad. I paid her mom millions of dollars in alimony, child support, put hundreds of thousands of dollars into the kids' college funds, paid for their health insurance, of course, and out-of-pocket medical costs, as I should have. The result was that the kids were able to live in a wealthy suburb of Chicago, attend top colleges, and pursue very good careers. Anyways, I asked Maddie to take down her video and at least correct the damaging inaccuracies. It just wasn't true that I wasn't covering medical costs. I told her almost everyone I know had seen it, including clients. It had the potential to hurt my business, hurt me professionally. And I certainly don't think she meant any harm by her first video. Fair. So like all the people say, why would this guy post it? That's one valid reasons to post it. When your adult daughter is trashing you online, hurting your business and all your reputation, yeah, you want to be able to defend yourself somehow, especially if she doesn't want to defend you after you ask her to take it down quietly. So I don't think this man's being unreasonable for him posting it. I think it's a very odd thing we're seeing unfold, but I don't think he's wrong. But she declined to take down her video because she said her video had gone viral. So she didn't want to take it down. So I came back a day or so later and told her that I had posted a response video on X. I think this girl's clout hungry, and I think she got problems with her daddy. Okay, and I think that's what comes out in these videos. That's that's what I see when I watch it. We we can agree on that. She's clout hungry. She was like that when she was a kid. She's like that even today. Okay, like yeah, it's your story, um, but it's also their lives, and you're dragging them into your story, and you're dragging them to the online world. And, and the worst part, on top on top of that, it's not even. There's a step. It's, it's a step further. It's a step further. It's you post your family online, and then they're like. This hurt in my business. Took it off. Nah. Because it's going viral. That's crazy. After you asked him for money. That's crazy. After he was asking him for money. That's, That's what makes me think this girl is a clout demon. Because she asked this dude for cash every time. But the moment he said, yo, this shit hurt my business. She said, nah, it's going viral. I need to She's selfish. She very into using people. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Which is okay, I guess. But you can't ask him for money. You can't keep asking him for shit. You ask for money and then after that you turn around and do that shit? Bruh, that's, 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 that's crazy. Well, then my response video really started to blow up. It hit 1 million views in about 12 hours. Then 5 million views, 10 million views, 20 million views, 30 million views, and on up from there. Maddie's mom started to freak out. Sent me long text messages telling me to take my video down. I'm like, but Maddie's video is still up and has 7 million views, and that's just on TikTok. Plus, Maddie has posted a much more negative second video, full of inaccuracies. So the mom was telling him to take it down while she left Maddie keep her video up. Mm -hmm. Yo, mom, mom, mom looking like trash in this one too. You can catch that L. I need mom to make a response video. Mom, if you're watching, <laughs> you want all the tea. Oh, mom, what you gotta say? Yeah, mom, he divorced you. What, who's the new woman? Where'd he meet her? Was it why y'all was married, huh? Tell us everything. Why are you still mad? Yeah, tell us the truth. Here are the basic facts. Maddie's mom and I got divorced in 2005. Maddie's mom and I had some very ugly legal proceedings that Maddie is largely unaware of. I don't talk about it, but our divorce was probably worse than most. I lived in LaGrange, Illinois from 2007 to 2011, just down the street from the kids. Saw the kids all the time. Then in 2011, Wanda and I bought a house in Willowbrook, Illinois, which is about an eight minute drive from the kids. Maddie's mom then got remarried in 2012. She moved to Wilmette, Illinois, which is about a one hour drive north from our house. The kids were older by this point. I continued to see all kids who wanted to see me would make the one hour drive to Wilmette, if any kid wanted to hang out with me. Now, teenage girls generally want to do their thing with their friends. I saw my son the most because he wanted to. I don't force the kids to hang out with me. If they want to hang out, cool. If they don't want to hang out, fine. Maddie is correct that the girls did not come over to the house, even though we were very close by. The girls didn't want to validate my wife, Wanda. 
We've been married since 2006. So the girls did not want to come over to the house, even though we were just down the street. It was a solidarity thing with mom. My son Peter would sometimes hang out at the house. He didn't seem to have any problem with Wanda. Okay, so Maddie graduated from Northwestern University in 2021. Upon graduation, she went to Los Angeles in hopes of becoming a Hollywood screenwriter. She asked me for $5,000 to help get her set up in Los Angeles, which I agreed to against my better judgment. Basically, I have trouble saying no to Maddie. That's another tendency of divorced dads. In addition, her mom and I bought her a used car, a Ford Fiesta. I think her mom and I pitched in $2,500 each. Maddie might have put in some money also. I think the car was about $7,500. I also co-signed a lease for her on her apartment. Now, this is very different from how I was treated by my dad when I graduated from college. <sighs> another thing I'll say that works against a daughter for me is like, you strike me as a bit of a brat when you become an adult and you're still asking for your dad who supposedly abandoned you for money for every little thing in your life. Sorry. To me, you strike me as a bit of a brat. You're going to this person all the time for money, but then you also want to trash them afterwards online for views and shit like that. It seem like you're using people for whatever you need. Because clearly you had these negative feelings for him this whole time, but you kept going to him for finances every time you needed a little something, every time things were tough. I could never. If I had a problem with a family member, I could never ask them for money if I really didn't like them. You seem like you use people when you need them. Yeah, I was not raised like that. If you have a problem with something, I'm not gonna go and ask that person some money. It's weird. That's weird. When you're in a you're, you're in a pinch, you ask them for money, but then you get on TikTok and, and you trash, trash them. Who raised you? It's him. I could well, never. Right. Well, apparently he didn't. No, it's according her. to her. It's her. So he got free. <laughs> He gave us some money growing up. I, like, I honestly don't know the nitty gritty of the financial situation. I, I really, really don't. But I do know that several times I've asked him for financial help with medical expenses, like especially like in college, and he wouldn't help me. So that's what I was referring to in my video when I was like, he wouldn't pay some of my medical bills. But also she had broken up with her boyfriend around this time. She said she needed to go to grief counseling and therapy. She and her mom wanted me to pay for that too. That's where I drew the line. I consider medical care to be like when you're sick or have a broken leg or... So the medical bills that he wouldn't pay was because she broke oh, up with a boy. No, no, no. It was for grief counseling over a boyfriend nigga. Okay, I'm choosing sides. <laughs> I'm choosing sides. Yo, no, no, this, it, it looks- I try. It, it looks bad. I, I tried, try. I tried to allow grief it. Grief counseling. I tried to allow it. And you I called him a deadbeat because he wouldn't pay for thick grief counseling after a breakup make it he pays for your medical insurance and you said he wouldn't pay for your medical bills and it was grief counseling oh i thought somebody died girl it was just your boyfriend so i guess these were the medical bills that i was refusing to cover now she did land a job in la with nbc peacock streaming and that was going very well for her she loved it she was an assistant writer for a show but then the writer strike hit which lasted about six months and she temporarily lost her job or was laid off at nbc peacock streaming she, of course, approached me to see if I could help her out with funds. Otherwise, she said she'd be forced to move back to Chicago and live with mom. Oh, my God. Writer's strike is not even that long ago. That's not even that long. She was still asking for money. She, she, was, she graduated. Then I gave her some startup money, some adulthood startup money, which is a thing that does not exist. You know when the strike was? Last year. And she's trashing her dad, but she in the DMs asking for more money all the time. Actually disgusting. She probably asked her mom, her mom said, go ask your dad. Yo, listen, I'm not going to watch any more of this. You guys can go see the rest no, of it. No, 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 we're doing a job. Wait, wait, 20 minutes. You can go watch the rest of it. I don't want to play the whole thing. It's fine. There's still more of it to go, and they can go watch oh, the rest of it. Oh, you're really pissed off about it. You're done. No, I, I think it's just enough. It's enough. This is what I think. Sometimes, and just even hearing him, how he talks about his dad, his dad's parenting style. He talks about his dad didn't really text much. He talked about how his dad really didn't give him any money, mm -hmm. and he's much better than his dad and it's possible okay and it's possible that his standards for how much better he is than his dad are real and but maybe they don't meet the standards of what she needs who knows okay this is what i'll say sometimes it's not that your dad is absent sometimes that you don't make an effort to reach out and people think that parental relationships are a one-way street where the parent is supposed to do all the legwork to make it work between the two of you not recognizing that a fostering a relationship actually still takes two people and that includes your parent especially if they're divorced but it's Especially if they're divorced. But then again, if you're being fed some shit by your mom, like, I, and I, I appreciate the fact that he was saying that, hey, you know what? Don't get at her. Because it's still her, from her perspective, I appreciate that. It's still her perspective from what she see and what she's been fed. There was anger there. And in the first video that he did, he was like talking about, yeah, I messed up and I left. And that's probably where the anger is from. But if you guys want a relationship with your parent, it's also your responsibility. 100%.
So this doesn't strike me as a situation where the dad's actually some deadbeat or some absent father. This strikes me as a situation where there's a lot of pent up feelings and things are not being discussed and she thinks it's his dad's fault and that he never discussed it. All I'll say about this, some of you guys need to go reach out to your parents. They're not actually deadbeats. You just have a lot of negative feelings there and you haven't dealt with them. And the longer it builds up, the more absent they are, the more resentful you become, not recognizing you also have power in this situation. So that's all I'll say. The key point thing is whenever you have a parent that's not talking down on significant other and you just have we have two parents and it's just one person that's bickering about the other when you're separated, that's a red flag. That's weird. You have to see who's talking about who. The initial narrative was he left them alone to go pers- all of that is wrong. That's not what we see here. The rest oh, is just extra drama. But like you said, there's a lot of pent up feelings in that shit. Yeah. And it's sad to put that shit online. Well, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Even if I think the original video was made in jest, I don't think she was actually trying to make the claim that he was out there going to break dance. I think she was trying to put a funny spin on it because he's not around much and he goes and he break dances and he's known for that. So it's a funny star. But as that's getting viral and people are calling him a deadbeat in the comment, it's your job to correct that. That's your job. Yeah. That's where you come across as slime. Because we all maybe might massage the Comics do it all the time. Comics do it all the time when they do their content. They massage stories and make elements that are not there, actually there, and they'll change it around. And there's some element of truth to it. He really does break dance, but that's not why he left everybody for. That's not why. But it's a funnier story if you say it that way. Yeah, I don't think that's what it was. But What do you mean? I think she actually meant what she said. I think he left she, the family yeah, to break I dance? I think she meant that. She meant exactly that, and she thought it was, <laughs> it's canon, it's funny. I'm healed now. I'm okay with it now, but it's kind of funny. That, that's what I thought it happened. I don't think that if she was like, okay, let me twist it to be a bit of a, a funny story. I don't think that's what the point. Well, she was complimenting the whole time and laughing about it. Yeah. And she was saying trauma that is funny. So that's why she was so going about So the trauma it. means that it's real. So The trauma is the fact that he's absent. He didn't actually leave the family to break dance. That's a funny bit. That's something just, comics do all the time. I'm not saying no, but I'm, I'm not buying it. I, I cannot. I can't. Okay, yeah. So you're just assuming her intent. I can assume her intent. Yeah, the yeah. same way that you're assuming that she's the opposite. No, but I'm saying you would give the benefit of doubt to every comedian, but because it's a non-comedian, all of a sudden they're not allowed to make jokes. Comics do that all the time. All the comedians have good intentions when they make jokes. But regular people, no. They're all doing it because they're malicious. No, it's just how she formulates it. It's really just how she formulated it. That's it. How does she and the formulate fact, And the fact that if, if, you, if you was about to say that it was a joke, it was a joke, then then you could say that. After that, in, in your follow-up video, you're going to say, oh, you know what? I could have made you look really even, 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 even worse. But, but, but that's the whole point. She's trying to say the reality of the situation is substantially worse than that, but I never went that. I went from a funny, made-up story. That's literally what she said in the follow-up video. I think that they have the liberty to do whatever the hell they want, but there's going to be reper- repercussions. So, yeah, you're allowed. It's not against a lot to talk about your parents. Go ahead. But if they respond and make a video, well, it's the same liberty that you had to make that video they have the same on the side so yeah i just it's weird to me it's more than just weird so this is like extreme bizarre land it feels like this was a very interesting saga a lot of different takes a lot of people feel very drastically different about it and i think that's what makes this really interesting no we can always debate like like if it's if it's your story can you tell it like, if that was part of a book, would we allow it? You understand what I'm saying? Like, it's you lived your experience, so you talk about your lived experience, mm-hmm. right? I think the problem, like, you could put it in a book and everything and stuff, and the difference between putting all that thing in a biography or putting it in a book, and no matter how tra- traumatic that your experiences is, is that she puts footage that we can directly link the dad okay. to what it is. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we they do that in biography, and they do that. They talk about the traumatic events, and they talk about that, and that's fine. The fucked up part that she did, she did all that, and I was like, okay, your lived experience, but you, this is him putting your pictures in the name. And I think that's the fucked up part that was. I think even if I tell a story about my mom, I'm careful. Even if she's not a public figure, I'm careful. Because mm. someone who watches me might know my mom and mm. they'll be asking about that. Mm. So I'm very careful. Mm-hmm. The stuff I say is very innocuous or chill. Why? Because I want to be able to protect my mom from a lot of this online mm-hmm. stuff. That's that's my general rule. If you care about these people, you should try to protect them. If you don't care, then I guess blast them by all means. But then again, if they blast bad, yeah, that's, that's really it's what just it is. Everybody, everybody's blasting. Just do you, but I mean, don't be surprised. Anyways, anything else? No.